Hello, writers. Welcome to episode number five of How Do You Write? I'm your host, Rachel Heron, and as I record, it's actually the 4th of July, so if you hear um, fireworks going off in the background, that is my neighborhood. It is like heavy artillery out there this whole week and last week and next week, and I personally love it. Um, The dogs really, really hate it, especially Clementine. But um, today we're going to be talking to Esme Weijun Wang, and I really enjoyed our interview. I can't wait to read her book. Have I mentioned already that this is the problem with the podcast, that I am amassing this pile of books that I will work my way through, but I'm just, I just keep meeting new fabulous writers. So that's wonderful. A little bit of an update. Um, Well, it is the 4th of July weekend, which means it's my birthday weekend. And I just opened my birthday present from Lala and it is a Midori Traveler notebook. Um, If you haven't seen these, it's basically a little bit narrower than the regular Moleskine size notebook, but um, you fill it with different things. You can have three or four different journals slapped in it, um, kept separately. They're thin. So um, I'm going to have a bullet journal as one of them. I'm going to have a diary as another one and a plotting notebook, all in the same beautiful leather bound um, thing. And I just actually can't tell you how excited I am about that because I am such a um, organizational nerd and I love my Moleskine. But the Moleskine does fill up with um, seven pages of plotting stuff, one page of bullet journal of things I have to get done that day, a little bit of a diary, and it just all kind of blends together and it's, you know, what's that's fine, that's fabulous. But I am excited to try this new way of keeping my notes because I do a lot of work longhand. Basically all my thinking about plotting is longhand in my journal. I can't seem to come up with connections the same way on the computer as I do in the journal. Um, All my writing, all my first draft writing, all my secondary, third, tertiary, 37th draft writing happens on the computer, but all the um, ideas happen in the notebooks. So that's exciting. We're going to go to San Francisco right now to, um, right after this, to the Meido Japanese stationery store, and I might get a few more add-ons to go inside my new Midori Traveler's Journal. So this is... um, a long way of saying I like things like pens and stationary products, and I bet you do too. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Esme. I know you will. Thanks for joining. I am with Esme Weijun Wang today, and I am so excited to interview you. Thank you for being here. Let me give you, a, uh, listeners, a little bit of your bio. So Esme Weijun Wang is an award-winning author and advocate, and at her website, EsmeWang.com, she provides resources that assist aspiring and working writers in developing resilience on the path to building creative legacy. Wang's emphasis on resilience originates from her own experiences as a writer, having learned the importance of adapting to difficult times from living with schizoaffective disorder and late-stage Lyme disease. And she studied creative writing and psychology at Yale and Stanford and received her MFA from the creative writing program at the University of Michigan. She's the author of The Border of Paradise, which looks fantastic and has quickly jumped to the top of my to-be-read pile, which has been called Gothic in Tone, Ambitious in Scope, and Creepy in Spades by Kirkus Reviews, and an extraordinary literary and gothic novel of the highest order by NPR Books. She delights in organizational tools, handwritten letters, and her home base of San Francisco. I am just across the bridge from you over in Oakland. So, oh, hello. Welcome. Thank you so much. Your book Hi. sounds amazing, and the cover is gorgeous. Oh, so, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I would love to ask you a few of my general questions, and then I have one specific one for you. Um, what is the best time of day for you to write? Talk about uh, your process. The best time of day for me to write is the best time of day for me in general, which is very early morning. I usually wake up between usually four or five, maybe a little earlier, and uh, it's kind of downhill from there. Um, (laughs) Around usually 12 o'clock is when I'm done for the day, but I like to do my writing in the early morning. Me too. I don't talk to too many people who like those dark hours like I do. Yeah, I I love 4 4 a.m. I think is a real magic kind of hour. Mm -hmm. Um, And how do you write? Longhand, computer? 
Um, so things have changed since I developed late stage Lyme disease. Mm-hmm. I used to do most of my writing on my laptop. Um, it's hard for me to sit at a desk for long periods of time, so it's not as easy to do that. I've actually been experience, um, experimenting with different methods now. So I've been doing some writing actually on my phone in a little yeah. notes drafts app. Um, it's easier for me when I'm lying in bed to write that way. I've also tried longhand, although that can be difficult too if I'm having a tough day health-wise. But yeah, so right now I'm experimenting and trying out new things. Do you ever use the um, dictation on your no. phone? Um, so first of all, I find that my mind doesn't really work well that way. And also, uh, you know, for all of my experience with dri- both drag and dictate and also the built-in uh, dictation that comes with the Mac products, um, there's just still too much there's there's a still quite a margin of error there that yes. makes it difficult. Yeah. Well, I have a theory that it's because we're watching the words pop up on the screen and we're seeing the errors. So mm-hmm. we switch right back into editing mode, which we shouldn't mm-hmm. be in when we're drafting. That's my theory anyway. So I've been practicing with Dragon Dictate lately, but I, I make the words so small I can't see them. Mm-hmm. And then um, I, I just make sure that the cursor is still moving, but I don't know if it's working or not. But I'd like to save these hands. Yeah, you know? I mean, if it works for you, that's great. Yeah, late stage late stage Lyme disease is horrible. I'm sorry yeah. that you're dealing with that. Thank you. Ugh. Where do you write most, and why do you write there? Um, I tend to write in bed yeah. <laughs> because that's how, where I have to write mostly. Um, I do try to spend time at my desk if I can, if I'm having a particularly good day. I really enjoy doing writing residencies as well. I've done a number of those, and that has had to adapt and change a little bit with my health issues, but I really enjoy having long stretches of time. What has been your favorite writing residency that you've done? I'd have to say my favorite one was probably Hedgebrook. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah, it's really good. (laughs) Everybody loves that. I have a dream of going there someday. How do you refill the creative well? I think mostly, well, there are a lot of different ways interacting with people, being out in the world is helpful. But honestly, I think reading is a really good way to refill the creative well for me. I really like to be able to hear other people's voices in my head. Um, I I like to be able to experience the world through other people's eyes. Um, I think a lot of When I was in my steepest learning curve in terms of writing in graduate school, the most learning I did was from reading books that I wouldn't have otherwise read if not for the reading exam that we had. Yeah. What is your favorite genre of book to read generally? Um, I don't. You're probably I voracious don't... like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think uh, I don't I don't really know what. um genre means anymore really like is it you know um I guess I would say literary fiction but that's so broad um I I do enjoy thrillers and psychological thrillers but that's not the kind of thing that I tend to write yeah I don't write it either but I love reading psychological thrillers I'm kind of addicted right now (laughs) what secret writing tip of awesomeness did you discover the hard way Mm, I think this the secret writing tip of awesomeness. I, I saw that you had mentioned this question uh, when you sent over the questions, and I just could not think of what a secret writing tip of awesomeness was. I guess um, I think figuring out whether you're a planner or a discoverer is a big one. I think I am in fiction anyway, a discoverer. Mm-hmm. I, I had hundreds of pages that didn't end up going into my debut novel. Um, when it comes to my fiction writing and uh, writing nonfiction essays, I am very much a planner. So I will have, I have, um, this is actually my next book. Uh, it's, this thing is like filled with index cards with like little notes on them. And then I put them all over the place, um, like on bulletin boards and things. But um, figuring out whether you're a planner or a discoverer is a big help. Um, I know a lot of people who thought they could try to be a discoverer, but then realized that outlines were really the way they were meant to to go. And it, I think it ends up saving you a lot of time. 
I, I think it does too. I think that in my heart of hearts, I'm still a discoverer, but I, I need the outline for time's sake, you know, <laughs> yeah. for, for speed. How about a quick craft tip of any sort? Do you have one of those for us? Um, a quick craft tip is one that I picked up from Professor Elizabeth Talon at Stanford when I was in college. I'm not going to be able to say it quite as well as she does or did, but um, it has to do with if you feel an inclination or an instinct to go toward a certain plot point or even a certain line or a certain paragraph to challenge yourself, often the plot point or moment that you're heading towards is actually a cliche. And the reason that you're heading in that direction is that it's the easiest thing to go for. That's huge. Kind of like, you know, water runs downhill. You're going the downhill (laughs) route instead of going uphill. Yeah. In discovery. I'm going to add that to my arsenal. Thank you. This is basically (laughs) why I'm doing the podcast is to get more craft tips. (laughs) And would you tell us about your debut novel a little bit? Yeah. um, So I'm, it's a multi-generational saga. Um, It is what I would call immigrant gothic. Um, It follows the story of what happens to a family when its patriarch, David Nowak, um, ends his own life. And uh, his family lives in a very rural area of the Sierra Nevadas in Northern California. And their lives spiral out of control after his death. The book opens with the suicide. Is that right? The book opens like the very first page is like, I am in this motel and I am going to kill myself. Oh, wow. (laughs) So that's how it starts. Yeah. Okay. And it is called The Border of Paradise and it's from Unnamed Press. And where can listeners find you online? Uh, listeners can find me at esmaywang.com. There's a lot of stuff on that website. And I'm also on Twitter a lot. And that's at Esme Wang. Okay. And tell us a little bit about the, um, you have a Facebook page for restorative journaling. Is that what I got right? Or... Oh, um, there's actually uh, a bunch of I resources. Have, yeah. So there's a bunch of resources, including an e-course that I built about that's restorative right. journaling. And you can find out about that at esmaywang.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Esme. I hope to meet you in person sometime. And yeah. I really you appreciate much. you being with the show today. Thank you.